Good morning, and the Lord be with you. Before I go any further, of course, I should take a moment now to thank our two amazing musicians, Mr. Ken Mine, who's helping out today, as he does every single Christmas. It's such a wonderful tradition we have at our church that he joins with our minister of music, Mr. Ed Detling, in helping with some wonderful pieces. We thank God for them, for their service today, for all the help they've given us and give us down through the ages They've been such a blessing to us. And I also get to say to you once again today, 
Merry Christmas. We continue to celebrate the miracle of miracles, the gift of gifts, the word that became flesh, Jesus Christ himself, who was born into our world to take away our sin, to be our Savior, and to give us the gift of eternity. That's what we remember. That's what we hear about today. That's what we celebrate as the people of God on this Christmas. We give thanks for Jesus, of course, as always. A lot happening in our community and a lot happening around the church. You get the emails, of course. I encourage you to stay in touch. We continue to collect items. We collect items throughout the next couple of days. We'll collect them into the first week of January. Non-perishable food items, winter weather wear, new coats, new hats, new gloves, new scarves with the tag still on, and of course, $25 Target gift cards. If you want to find out ways to get involved with giving, with helping out our community, contact the church office at your convenience, of course. All of that being said, our service begins today with the confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we celebrate the miracle, God himself, born in human flesh, let us confess our sin and human weakness. God of grace, we confess before you that we have wandered from your presence to seek the false security of other gods around us. We often look for you in strongholds of power and wealth and do not see your presence among the ordinary places of our world. Forgive us, O Lord, and redirect us to forms of service that fulfill your desire for us. Amen. Amen. You are my children. I am your Savior, says our God, who has redeemed us, who lifts us up and carries us all our days. In mercy and loving kindness, God forgives us all of our sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the, in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the reading of God's Word. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, the 61st chapter. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hands of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew up and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, grown-ups. Welcome back on another wonderful Sunday morning, and Merry Christmas! I'm so happy to be here with you today. So boys and girls, when I was little, I had this really special notebook called a friend's file. And some of my friends also had a really special notebook, and we would exchange, we'd swap them with one another. And there were questions inside that we would answer. And some of the questions were really easy, like your name, your birth date, your home phone number, because this was before cell phones, and your email address. But there were also some questions that were a little bit more challenging, like what would be three words you'd use to describe me? And boys and girls, I was always so excited and a little nervous to get my friend's file back, because I wanted to see what my friends had written down. And different friends wrote down different words because all friendships are different. But some words that were written down might have been kind, uh, silly or goofy, uh, maybe loving or caring. But there was one word that never came up, one word that no one ever wrote down for me. And that was independent. And boys and girls, just as a reminder, the word independent means doing things on your own, or not needing any help. So for example, the first time you tied your shoes on your own, that's something you did independently. Or maybe the first time you were allowed to walk to the bus stop on your own. Independent, right? And maybe I'm more independent now than when I was little. Maybe I have more independence from my parents, but I still need them. In fact, I talk to them every single day. They're watching right now. Hi, Mom and Dad. Love you. I need people. I need my wonderful family. I need my friends. I have a great group of friends 
that I call anytime I have a problem, and they're always there for me. And I need you guys, my faith community. You all strengthen me every single day. I need people. And boys and girls, there's someone else that we need, right? God. We need God. No matter how independent we might feel, we need God, especially right now. But the great news is that God is always there for us. And we hear this a lot in the Bible, right? That God is always there for us anytime we have a problem. And one example I'm going to read to you today from the Bible is from Psalm 34. And it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all of my fears. So right there, boys and girls, it tells us that God is always there for us. And the good thing is, no matter what we bring before God, he can handle it. Now, boys and girls, I know that you know that God loves you, and I know that you know he's always there for you, but do you know how strong God is? God is so strong. God made the heavens and the earth and everything in the universe. God is so strong. And because of that, he can handle anything that we present to him. And boys and girls, someone once said to me, God can handle your angry prayers. And I never really thought about that before. I always thought when I prayed, I had to be happy and excited and really positive. But that's not life, right? Sometimes life is hard and challenging, but God can handle it. God can handle it when you're disappointed or you're frustrated or you're upset. If you said, God, I don't know why I missed that goal in soccer. I'm so frustrated. Or God, why didn't I do better on my math test? I'm so disappointed. God can handle it. So boys and girls, remember, we are strong on our own, but we are better together. So give it to God. God can handle your struggles. He can handle all of the burdens you have in your life. God can handle it. God is strong. And God loves you, so he will handle it. Amen? Great job, boys and girls. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for strengthening us. Thank you for protecting us. Help us to remember to give our burdens to you and trust that you can always handle them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great job, boys and girls. We miss you and we're praying for you. Merry Christmas. And we can't wait to see you so soon. Our service continues now with our hymn of the day.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merry Christmas. Oh, yes, Merry Christmas. I hope you all had a blessed Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, however you were able to celebrate this year. We certainly are in unique circumstances, but I hope that Nonetheless, you were able to celebrate filled with joy, filled with the joy that we have, the greatest gift that we possibly could receive. We know we have. That is our Savior, Jesus. We say that phrase a lot, don't we? Jesus is the greatest gift. He is the greatest present we could ever receive. Let's think about that for a moment. Why is Jesus the greatest gift? Well, some of you might be thinking of an answer. This is a basic biblical principle of our faith. Jesus is the greatest gift because he loves us and because he has forgiven us of all of our sins. And if you think that, you are exactly right. That is so, so true. And that's the beauty of our faith, isn't it? That it can be so rich and full and yet so simple that even a child could understand it. But I want to dive a little bit deeper into this phrase, explore the meaning of Jesus being the greatest gift a little bit fuller. And to do that, you and I have to be brutally honest with one another, all right? Because when we look at this nativity scene... And we know it is the greatest gift, but it is not that flashy a gift. It's not that exciting a gift. Now, let me present a scenario, right? It's Christmas Day, and you're opening up presents. And the first present you open up is in a box, and you open it up, and it's a nativity set for your dining table. So when you look at the nativity set, you may always remember the reason for the season. And then the second box you open up, and it's a tiny box. You open it up, and you take it out, and it's some car keys. Which of these two presents are you going to get more excited about? And if you say the nativity set, then you are more pious than I am, because boy, oh boy, I'm going to get more excited about the brand new car. And let's... Uh, not dream so small, shall we? And yes, that was a small dream, because here we are in church. We're talking about God here. And you and I know what God is capable of, all the great gifts that he could give us, greater than just a new car. He could snap his finger and give us longer lives, pain-free. 
He could snap his finger and give us all the possessions we need in our lives. He could pay off our debts just like that. He could say one word, and this pandemic would be over today. I think you and I could agree that would be a pretty awesome Christmas gift. These gifts, they improve the quality of our lives right here and right now. They are very great in our eyes. And yet, you and I still say that Jesus is the greatest gift. You see, our God, he's a pretty cool, he's pretty cool, right? He knows what you need, as Jesus says. Our Father knows what you need before you even ask. And our God, even cooler than that, he knows what you need even when you don't know what you need. And while we always prioritize these earthly gifts, he's got a bigger picture in mind. He wants to give you a gift even greater than these earthly things. Because what's the problem with these earthly things? They are only temporary. A new car might be here one day and then erect the next. And maybe if you're good at taking care of your car, it still will only last a couple decades at most. And then it's worth nothing. Possessions can be lost, stolen, broken, worn down. Friends can come and go. Family members can pass away. Even our own lives are here one moment and gone the next. Like, Dust in the wind, these earthly possessions are. Lazarus, he's a great biblical figure to illustrate this point. You know who Lazarus is, right? He's the one whom Jesus raised from the dead. The scene is famous. Jesus, he, he comes to the foot of the tomb and he says, Lazarus, come out! And what happens? But Lazarus' lungs are... <gasps> Filled with air again, his heart begins to beat once more, and Lazarus does come out. Jesus gives Lazarus his very own life back. What a great gift that is. Perhaps the greatest gift ever, right? We should call up Lazarus right now and ask what it was like to receive this gift. But you and I know we can't do that, right? And not because Lazarus doesn't own a phone, but because Lazarus is not around anymore. Because once he was raised to life again, eventually, he died again. Because the wages of sin is death. Even this great, great, beyond imaginable gift that Jesus gives Lazarus is only temporary. All the blessings and gifts that we receive from our God in heaven while on this earth, they are only temporary. And our God, He knows this. And He loves you so much that He doesn't just want to give you gifts that will last for 80 years and then are gone. He wants to give you the best gift of all. A gift that never wears down. That never can be lost. That never can be stolen. He gives you the gift of His Son. And we know why His Son is such a special gift, right? Because through the birth of His Son here on earth and through His death on the cross we receive the forgiveness of sins, right? You and I, we know this. And because we receive the forgiveness of sins, we obtain access into God the Father's house in heaven forever. Brothers and sisters, why is Jesus the greatest gift? Because He is a forever gift. 
He is the only forever gift. He is the gift that surpasses all other things we could possibly receive right here and right now to improve the quality of our 80 years here on earth. No, the Son of God, His death and resurrection is a gift that lasts that, that lasts until when we see our Father face to face, He says, access to our Father's house in heaven. As Paul says, because of what Jesus has done, we receive adoption as sons and daughters of the Most High God. You see, our Father, He's pretty cool. And He knew what we needed before we even knew. And he knew that 80 years, he loved us too much. That was enough time with us. He wanted eternity with us. And see, he put on his thinking cap, and he said, I know. I'll send my son to die and rise again so that these people that I love, they can become members of my family. Brothers and sisters, because of this humble scene, because of Christ's death and resurrection, you are now members of God's family. And because you are members of God's family, you receive access to your Father's house in heaven forever. <laughs> Better than any luxury penthouse suite this world can offer, that's what you and I have to look forward to. That's why you and I can say Merry Christmas in the middle of a pandemic. That's why you and I can rejoice when life seems to be crumbling down around us. That's why you and I can smile when blessings in this life seem to be lacking. Because these things are only temporary. What our God has given us, it is a forever gift. How amazing is it that the truth has been revealed to us. That we can look at this humble scene. Now to an outsider, it might look like a mom and a dad and a kid and nothing more. To us, we see the greatest gift of all. As Simeon says in our gospel reading for today, for my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people a light for revelation. Brothers and sisters, the truth has been revealed to you. Take joy in this. Be joyful this Christmas season because we know we have much more in store for us. And you and I, were honest with each other, right? And we recognize that while this life might be temporary, it still can be long and hard. There are many challenges we can face, and we can often feel beat down by the worries of this life. So, brothers and sisters, how important it is for us to remind each other of this forever gift. How important is it for us to encourage one another when life beats us down, to rejoice when there seems to be little to rejoice about, because we know we have the thing, the most important thing to rejoice about, and others, they may look upon us and see our rejoicing and look towards the same humble scene as we do. Brothers and sisters, be filled with hope. Persevere until the end. Because in the end, it will all be worth it. Because you and I have received a forever gift. The end will not be the end, but it will be the beginning. So in this Christmas season, we can boldly proclaim with hearts filled up, Merry Christmas. Amen. Be filled with God's grace forever and ever. Amen.
And my friends, we join together now and confess the ancient Christian faith and the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into the heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, with great joy and humble awe, we acknowledge your dear Son to be the Word made flesh. We rejoice that because Jesus is now our brother, we have become your sons and daughters in baptism. Keep us, your children, in true faith in you and in fervent love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to our leaders wisdom and justice as they govern. Be with our president, our governor, and all those who lead at every level of our national government. Use all citizens to speak in defense of the defenseless. Abide with those who labor on behalf of others, especially those emergency workers, firefighters, police officers, and medical personnel who work and sacrifice at all times to always keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy, as your Son upholds the universe by the word of his power, grant our nation to always walk in humility before you. Bless all soldiers this day who stand watch in foreign lands. Keep them in safety as they serve, up, serve us and uphold their families while they are apart. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, the great mystery of the incarnation was first believed and proclaimed by common men and women, Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds. Give us confidence to tell the joyful message of our Savior's birth, life, death, and resurrection, that your Spirit may always work the miracle of faith as he wills. Lord, in your mercy, you sent Jesus to serve the poor and the forgotten before the wealthy and powerful. Keep us from false confidence in the earthly blessings you bestow and fill our hearts with generous love towards the destitute and the suffering that they may see Christ's love in ours. Visit and relieve the sick and the injured. Especially today, we do remember all the special people in our prayer guide and those we now name before you in our hearts. Lord, we pray that you would work in them and work through us and heal them and give them the love and support that they need according to your perfect mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Word made flesh in your crucifixion and resurrection, we have seen your glory. Give comfort to those who grieve. Grant to all people a sure and certain hope in the resurrection and eternal life for all believers in you on that great and glorious day when you return. In the meantime, keep us steadfast and faithful in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together and sing our final hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Angels from the realms of glory. 
serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.